All right, we're going to continue our unit two review with question six, which is asking us to solve this system of equations using any method we'd like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see if I can find which method would be easier, although any method would work for this. I can see that um, my variables here are all different types of numbers, so let's see. My top equation has 3 in front of x, but none of the other numbers in this equation are divisible by 3. It's got a 5 in front of y, and none of my other numbers in this equation are divisible by 5, so I wouldn't want to solve for either one of those variables for substitution. My bottom equation is similar, 2 in front of x, which would give me fractions if I try to solve for it, and 3 in front of y. Again, not everything is divisible by 3, so that would give me fractions as well. So I think that elimination would be the easiest method to solve this problem because I wouldn't have to deal with fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this question with elimination. Afterward, I will also solve it with substitution, so you can see that we can deal with the fractions and use either method to find the same answer. So for elimination, I need my functions to have matching coefficients. Um, I can either make the x's match or the y's. My x's are a coefficient of 3 and 2. I could turn both of those into the number 6 using multiplication. If I wanted to make my y's match, I could turn both of those coefficients into the number 15. Now 15 is a bit larger, so I'm going to go ahead and make my x's match so I don't have to deal with numbers that are that large. To make my x's match, I have to multiply the top equation by 2 and the bottom equation by 3. So let's go ahead and rewrite what we get down here. For my top equation, 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 5y is 10y. And on the other side of my equal sign, 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. For my bottom equation, we'll distribute the 3 to every single term. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 3y is 9y. And after the equal sign, 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. Now I have matching coefficients, but they're not opposite signs. So my next step is going to be to change every single sign in one of these functions. It doesn't matter which one I pick. I'm going to go ahead and change the signs in the bottom equation. So these are all going to become opposite signs. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to go ahead and add my terms up and down. So if I add 6x and negative 6x, I get nothing. And that's perfect. 10y minus 9y is positive y. And after my equal sign, 32 uh, and negative 27, oh sorry, negative 32 and positive 27 give me a negative 5 for my answer, which tells me that y is negative 5. So we have that solution. Now all I have to do is plug that back into either one of my original functions, and I'll find my x value. I'm going to plug it back into the bottom equation because the bottom equation has some smaller numbers. So I'm going to plug it in right there. So we see 2x plus 3y is negative 9. And I've just discovered that y is the number negative 5. So let's go ahead and um, I should have written that in red. It doesn't really make a difference. Negative 5. Let's go ahead and solve this guy for x now. So we'll multiply 3 by negative 5, so 2x minus 15 is negative 9. We'll distribute, or we'll move the negative 15 to the other side by adding 15. So 2x is negative 9 plus 15, which is going to be positive 6. And dividing by 2 tells us that x is the number 3. So the solution to my system is going to be 3 for x and negative 5 for y. 3, negative 5. Now before I move on to the next question, I want to go ahead and show you that I can get that same answer using substitution, even when there are fractions involved. So I'm going to pick either one of the original functions, it doesn't matter which one, and again I'll go ahead and pick the bottom one because it's got some smaller numbers. So I'll pick 2x plus 3y equals negative 9, and if I'm doing substitution, I have to solve for one of my variables. Neither one of these is going to be easier to solve for, so I'll solve for x. It really doesn't matter. So let's move this 3y to the other side, minus 3y. We end up with 2x equals negative 9 minus 3y. It doesn't matter which order I have these in. And we'll divide both sides by 2 to get x completely alone. So that tells me that x is negative 9 minus 3y over 2. Big disgusting equation, but we can deal with that. Now that I've done that, it's going to be my job to take this and plug it into the other function everywhere I see the letter x. So this is going to be 3 times x 
plus 5y equals negative 16. And the x value I just found is negative 9 minus 3y divided by 2. All right. Now, I have to multiply this whole x value here by the number 3, and then I have to divide it by 2. It doesn't matter which one I do first. Both of those are going to have to happen. Let's go ahead and multiply by the 3 first. So we're going to multiply both terms here by the number 3. Negative 27 minus 9y. Now we haven't divided by 2 yet, so we'll leave that there. And let's bring down the rest of my equation. Plus 5y is negative 16. Now, in reality, I don't want to divide either one of these numbers by 2 because they don't divide evenly. And I don't want to have to deal with the fact that this is giving me fractions because we hate fractions. So instead of dealing with this divided by 2, I'm going to eliminate it. I don't want to divide anything by 2. So to get rid of the dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply every single term in this equation by 2. The one I have in front here, this times 2 in front and this divided by 2 on bottom, will cancel each other out and I'm never actually going to have to multiply or divide either number into this equation. So I'm just going to have this negative 27 and the minus 9y. I don't have to divide them by 2 because I canceled it with the times 2. Now everything else I do have to multiply by 2. So 5y times 2 is 10y and negative 16 times 2 is negative 32. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and solve for y. No more fractions to worry about, no common uh, denominators to worry about, anything like that. All I have to do is solve for y. So I'm going to combine my like terms here. Positive 10y minus y, I get y, um, just one y. And this negative 27 equals negative 32. I'm going to add 27 to both sides. And negative 32 plus 27 is negative 5. So I get the same y value I found in my first method, and I, when I plug that back in, I will find the exact same x value. So the fact that it was a fraction, we dealt with by using multiplication to eliminate the fact that we were dealing with fractions at all, which means that we never actually had to divide anything into nasty numbers. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our last system of equations problem from the review packet, which is... Um, or our last solving one um, in algebraic form. Solve using any method. Again, I'm going to try and figure out which method would be easier for these two equations. I can see looking at my coefficients, again, kind of like in the last problem, 6x, I would have to divide by 6, and nothing else in this, numer in this first equation is divisible by 6 evenly. 5y, nothing else in this top equation is divisible by 5. And for my bottom equation, nothing's divisible by 3 or 4. So substitution would give me more fractions to deal with, and I'd rather not have to worry about that. So I'm going to solve this equation with elimination. The coefficients that are easiest to make match are going to be the coefficients of x, because I can turn 3 into 6 really easily by just multiplying it by 2. So let's rewrite our functions over here, and I'm going to take my bottom function and multiply everything by 2. So 6x plus 5y equals 28 is my first function. And my second function, I'll distribute 2 to everything. I'll get 6x. 2 times negative 4y is negative 8y. And on the other side of my equal sign, 2 times 1 is 2. Now that we have our matching coefficients, I'm going to change every single sign so that they're opposite signs. I'll do that for my bottom function because I feel like it. It doesn't make a difference. And now we're ready to combine terms up and down. So the 6x's are going to cancel. I have 8 y and 5y, that's going to give me 13 y's, and 28 minus 2 is 26. Now to get y completely low, and I'll divide by 13, and that shows me y is the number 2. I can go ahead and get my final answer by plugging 2 back into either one of my original functions. I'll pick the bottom one because it's got smaller numbers. So 3x minus 4 times y equals 1, and the y value I just found was the number so if I solve this guy, 3x minus 8 is 1. I can add 8 to both sides. 3x is the number 9. And dividing by 3 tells me x is 3, which tells me my final answer for this system. 3 for x, 2 for y, and I'm all done. 
We're going to pick up with our next problems, the word problems, in the next video.